Onychomycosis is a common fungal infection of the nail bed caused by a fungi group called dermatophytes and also some yeasts. The common dermatophytes responsible for this disease include trichophyton rubrum and trichophyton mentagrophytes, as well as the yeast Candida albicans. Onychomycosis can be split into four different subtypes. These include proximal subungal onychomycosis, distal lateral subungal onychomycosis, superficial white onychomycosis and candida onychomycosis. Each can be differentiated by clinical presentation and the isolation of a the particular fungi or yeast causing the infection. Onychomycosis is commonly contracted in environments where fungi and yeast thrive, such as in damp and warm environments, for example, public showers. It is prevalent in those of an elderly generation and is commonly seen in individuals with diabetes, HIV or the immunosuppressed. The common signs and symptoms are what initially assist healthcare professionals when identifying the type of onychomycosis. Proximal subungal onychomycosis is an uncommon pattern of invasion which usually presents as a patchy discoloration where the fungus enters via the proximal nail fold and spreads distally under the nail which can eventually lead to destruction of the nail plate. This form of invasion is usually found in patients with chronic nail diseases and immunosuppressed and is usually caused by trichophyton mentagrophytes. Distal lateral subungal onychomycosis is the most common form of onychomycosis. It often appears as a yellowish brown colour and can cause onycholysis, which causes the nail plate to detach from the nail bed. It can result in thickening of the nail and have a crumbled appearance. This is primarily caused by trichophyton rubrum. Superficial white onychomycosis is recognised by its white, powdery and flaky appearance. The, infec the infection affects the nail plate rather than the nail bed, also caused by trichophyton rubrum. Candida on Onychomycosis usually affects the whole nail. It commonly shows a brownish yellow colour and has a brittle appearance. This infection can also cause swelling of the posterior nail fold and can inflame the area of the nail matrix. This type is called, caused by the Candida albicans. When diagnosing onychomycosis, it is important to appropriately identify whether the patient has onychomycosis as other diseases can mimic the same symptoms, for example, psoriasis. For appropriate diagnosis, a two-step process is required. Firstly, a physical examination, which identifies the clinical characteristics of the nail and the patient's previous medical history. The second step consists of a laboratory test, which include routine testing methods of microscopy, histology, and a fungal culture. When conducting a laboratory test, a nail sample must be collected. This requires ensuring the nail and surrounding areas are cleaned using alcohol to remove external contaminants such as bacteria. A nail clipping is then taken from the nail plate and a sample of the debris underneath the nail is collected using a curette. The sample is then sent to a laboratory for a microscopic examination using potassium hydroxide, which breaks down the keratin to reveal the fungal elements. This method determines the presence of fungi but does not identify the species but is a faster way to initiate treatment. Another method of diagnosis is a fungal culture. It uses SDA agar to isolate the culture to identify the fungi through morphology. This can take up to a month. If visual microscopic examination and cultures are not providing an accurate diagnosis, then histopathology is used to identify the fungi. Histopathology involves examination of different sections of the nails after staining. It uses special stains from, for example, acid shift, which causes a reaction. The fungi are differentiated using different identifying structures such as hyphae or appearance of colonies on agar. The clinical course of onychomycosis is dependent upon the type. For example, if a patient has distal lateral subungal onychomycosis, the clinical course of infection starts at the skin which then spreads proximally by entering through the distal subungual and lateral nail groove. The nail then appears opaque, discoloured and yellow as the infection progresses. This can then eventually lead to onycholysis, lifting of the nail from the nail bed. The prognosis of the clinical treatment varies depending on the severity of the onychomycosis along with many other factors such as age and medical conditions that affect circulation, such as type 2 diabetes. 
Patients with conditions such as these need to be made aware of the potential longevity of the treatment and also the possibility that the condition may only be managed rather than cured. Treatment for onychomycosis is a very lengthy process and depending on the type of onychomycosis, relapse is likely. When choosing a treatment option for onychomycosis, it is important to consider any comorbidities that could affect the treatment or any other medications that could have potential drug interactions. The likelihood of compliance and cost of the therapy must also be considered. Oral administration of antifungal drugs is the most common and most effective treatment for onychomycosis. The course of the oral medication varies from patient to patient, but can be taken for months until symptoms disappear. If any adverse drug reactions are experienced, then the oral medication is stopped immediately. Topical treatment is applied directly to the nail as a lacquer, gel, cream, or patch in mild cases. Treatment for topical therapy can last up to 18 months and has a high relapse rate, which is why often a combination therapy is used consisting of topical agents and systemic oral antifungal agents. Non-pharmacologic treatments can also be used in conjunction with topical treatments for better outcomes. Debridement by a podiatrist is useful for reduction in pain in clients and also helps the topical treatment to penetrate the nail more effectively. Another non-pharmacologic treatment option is removal of the nail. This must be performed by an experienced podiatrist but can be done easily and quickly in the clinic and means that the entire area of infection is removed. It is important to be extremely cautious using this method for patients with type 2 diabetes or circulatory issues because removal of the nail can lead to a wound which could therefore lead to infection or difficulty healing.